Welcome, this is my thoughts on the 1990s X-Men animated show, season 4, episodes 4 and 5, Sanctuary Part 2, and Xavier Remembers. So, spoilers for the show leading up to it, including these two episodes, another two episodes I absolutely love. In the description box, the top link is to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so, they really deserve your support. And the links to videos right below are videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in to Sanctuary Part 2. So, yeah, a couple of scenes in this episode of some excellent action where the X-Men are facing the Asteroid M mutants. And, yeah, Rogue is very worried about Gambit. And he is kind of flaky, so you can understand where she's coming from. And let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, there's a ceremony for Magneto, and we get a flashback. Now, last time we saw his past, they, you know, it was basically this, like, oh, you know, Latin American kind of, you know, rebels or something. This time, those sure do look like, you know, Germany, you know, Nazi Germany soldiers with the, the bucket helmets. So, yeah, they're, they're getting closer to, you know, they don't say the word Nazi here. I can imagine there's probably a rule about that in children's television. Let's see. And... Yeah, Cortez gets angry at, I, I missed her name, but she's basically just saying, hey, don't torture Gambit, and he's like, if you don't, if you're not careful, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll have you on trial, you know, so he is fully this, like, dictator leader kind of thing, you know, any, any dissent leads to harsh punishment. And, yeah, I quite like Emilia investigating. And we get some very cool X-Men suits, which kind of, you know, really underlines me the fact that there's not been a lot of, like, alternate suits on this show. Like, we've gotten flashback to the 60s ones, and there's been, like, there was, you know, some different ones in, like, time travel stuff. But, like, from what I remember, you know, I... It's been a while since I watched the 87 Turtles, uh, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon, but I remember that one as being very, you know, certainly it was a show that was very eager to sell toys, and something that, I'll admit, I only learned, you know, once the internet came around, the show was actually written around the toys they wanted to sell, not... Oh, they wrote stories they wanted to tell, and oh, would you look at that? It led to toys. You know, this show way less. You know, I can imagine they were probably hoping to sell comic books and hoping people would return for next episode and such. But yeah, and Beast has to disable two hundred and fifty rockets. So that's yeah. And as usual, he's like, you know, he's not letting it get him down. He's like, one down, 249 more to go. And Magneto actually did manage to survive. So yeah, basically, you know, Cortez versus non-mutants really makes me think of like Israel versus Gaza. Now, to be clear... The Jews having a country is great. The, you know, for, I guess, what was it, like, was it a full 2,000 years? It's, like, insane how long they didn't have a country. However, today, they are doing the evils that were done to them to the people of Gaza. And, let's see. Yeah, Amelia does get, you know, gets her hands on the proof and shows it to all the, the mutants, you know, love a good, you know, r reveal scene in, in one of these, you know, yeah, 
in a in a piece of American media that that you know look this is what the person actually says or this is what they did and then lied about you know it was very it was an optimistic time you know today you can literally prove to MAGA no look you know Trump said one thing and did another and they're like no he didn't let's see and Beast says, like, you know, a saboteur, much like a guest, should know when to leave. <laughs> like, a bunch of missiles are flying right by him, and he's like, you know, just, yeah. And, yeah, you know, Magneto destroys Asteroid M, noting, you know, I shall survive as long as I know how to love. And, yeah, Cortez has ended up in the hands of Apocalypse, who, yet again, does the, the laugh. You know, I, I don't know why villains in, in these things are always so jolly, but they are. You know, they're just, they, they everything makes them laugh. It's, it's, a, it's a great attitude, honestly. We should, we should all be more like Saturday morning cartoon villains from comic books. And that brings us to ep season four, episode five, Xavier Remembers. And yeah, that is some wake up call. Was Cyclops sleeping in the uniform? I, no, I guess we've seen him out of the uniform. I'm guessing, especially Gene has, I'm guessing he was like on call or something. And yeah, so they're attacked by memories. So of course, you know, Wolverine is up against Sabretooth. Jubilee is up against the Sentinel. Let's see, Storm is dealing with the claustrophobia and just, uh, yeah. And, yeah, be so easy. And, yeah, it is the Shadow King again. And, yeah, we see Storm as a child pickpocket which I believe is comic accurate, and I appreciate that they eventually did fit that into the movies. And very cool when, when they're in the astral plane and they're like monsters fighting each other. And yeah, you know, the... the uh, Xavier actually formed the X-Men to fight people like the Shadow King. He had never encountered an evil mutant before. And... Let's see... Yeah, and, and you know, Shadow King is in Xavier's body. And we get the very unusual, you know, a physical fight will solve nothing. You know, that doesn't happen a lot on this show. But, yeah, I, I really, really love seeing the astral plane and fights between telepaths. And, you know, in, in its defense, Jubilee, that Sentinel is just introducing a tiny bit more purple to your already very purple room. And... Yeah, you know, Shadow King was in, you know, spent 20 years in a cold, formless prison, which I think means he was a conservative. And, yeah, I mean, this episode almost must be set before the other Shadow King episode. So that's an interesting out of, you know, out of chronological order thing. Because that one does specifically end with, or, or, you know, at the start of that one, Shadow King was trapped in the astral plane. And in that one, like, you know, yeah, Xavier says it's been 20 years since. So, yeah. And I, I know I said it before in, in the other Shadow King episode, but man, the, the design of the Shadow King is just so, so cool. And they fight with lightsabers, just so amazing. And Xavier manages to find the upside. You know, he reminded me why I formed the X-Men and 
for that I will always be grateful, which just, yeah, great attitude to have. I think that is about what I have to say for these two episodes. The, the Sanctuary arc does another great job, you know, yet again on the show, of showing how, you know, you can start with good intentions. You know, the, the, there is a thing of, you know, the road to, you know, the other place is paved with good intentions. And, yeah, because, like, you know, yeah, it was, like, Xavier does use threat to create, you know, to, to get the, the um, yeah, to get, you know, to, to announce Asteroid M. But he was legitimately intending to keep it completely peaceful once they got there, you know. So, yeah, that that is a um, what's the word? You know, the fact that it does end up a bad thing does you know with with Cortez taking power and and using that to you know wage war on humans. And, you know, it's the kind of, you know, we can we can see where he's coming from. Although, and that's something I, I appreciate. Once he has the power, he is really just serving himself. You know, he's sitting there with the remote and, like, just, yeah, he's he's not, like, you know, because the, the, you know, if he was a, if he were a good leader, you'd have, like, you know, maybe he listens to some of the Asteroid M mutants who are like, okay, so... You know, great place, love what you've done here, but there's actually this problem that, you know, if you could address that and he'd be like, you know what, let's, let, I'll, I'll look into it, you know, kind of thing. But no, he's, he's by himself just amusing himself and he gets very angry when called away. And let's see. I think that might be, you know, the, the yeah, Xavier Remembers is another case where you can tell that the writers of the show actually know the characters. They are legitimately, you know, the, the various things that, they're that the characters are attacked by is extremely specific to them. You know, and like all of the, you know, Wolverine and Storm did fight Sentinels, but they weren't terrified by them the way Jubilee was. You know, that was the first time she was in, you know, in, in any kind of fight because she was a mutant. Whereas the others, they've been doing this for a while. You know, the, the thing that Wolverine is haunted by is his violent past with Sabretooth, a very literal physical representation of that. They used to fight together. They used to do bad things together. And Storm, it's the uh, um, claustrophobia, you know. So, yeah. Um, I think that is everything. So, yeah. Um, catch you again tomorrow. Make mine Marvel.